just a few days from today it's going to be 15th of august the independence day of india at the same time we also saw the turmoil which happened in bangladesh so one thing which you must have observed is while bangladesh is burning india and indians are at peace growing and working in various directions well there is a invisible contributor to our peace and that's called defense research organizations of course army is taking care of all of us they are you know taking care of the enemies too but who will take care of the army who will make sure that the army is comfortable in what they do for us right and that is where defense research organizations comes into picture so in india there are uh, more than 10 defense research organizations but in this video we are going to focus only on those defense research organizations where you as a biotech researcher can contribute now what better than contributing towards your own nation building right my grandfather was a freedom fighter and he told me always that a stronger nation can only be peaceful so if we have to grow and we have to become a super power probably the biotech super power of the world which i keep telling you always we have to contribute towards nation building with our expertise which is biotech right so let us today find out in this video five to six biotech research organizations inside defense research organizations where you as a biotech professionals can professional can work and you can earn a lot of money too right there is only one downside you can go in public and tell about what research you're doing because hey that's a secret right okay so if you are ready for that let's start with the first one so obviously you have heard about the defense research and development organization and we call it as drdo now what does drdo do drdo is into multiple things the first thing obviously will be doing research on various aspects of defense but they also work on proactive defense future defense and things which might happen in the future for example bio defense or bio warfare bio weapons so there's a lot of research going on developing vaccines fast working on fast diagnostics or uh, therapeutic uh, uses of uh, various uh, medicinal agents and also how to thwart a bio terrorism attack or um, how do you take care of this uh, biological threats which the country might face from various enemies and now that we say that okay we have a pakistan and china on our neighbors and they are not so friendly so obviously we need to be proactive so what our drdo is doing is they are doing research on bio defense so if you do research on bio defense then you are getting inside drdo is for sure it's very easy so you have to publish some papers do your phd in bio defense and then you can work in that direction now the second one where you can get in will be bio materials right so you must have seen that our soldiers wear um, uniforms right how can we make it more comfortable how can we make it more uh, much better also uh, how can we use nanotechnology into that how can we embed sensors into that how can we use biodegradable materials bio sensors bio compatible materials for um medical and defense uh, purposes so all of that comes under the purview of drdo research and that is where you can get in easily now the third thing where drdo is working is human performance agent so you know that we of course we don't want super soldiers but definitely we want our soldiers to have better capacity so that they don't get tired fast so a lot of human performance enhancement research is going on now what does, what does it mean developing nutraceuticals ayurveda adaptogens and biotech solutions to improve soldier health and endurance and performance in extreme conditions we know that our soldiers work in siachen the highest glacier in the world nobody will even dare to go but our brave soldiers are protecting us from china right there in siachen but how would we make them comfortable how would how would we make them warm how would we keep them warm and make sure that they are able to do what they are they to do do that they should not die from cold instead they should be there protecting our country and they should come back happily right so it's our duty and that is where you can get into drdo now coming to another aspect which is environmental biotechnology developing waste management technology water purification sustainable living in a challenging environment this kind of systems if you could create because our soldiers work not in office but their office is the border and border is most of the time 99% of the time 
the borders are interminable inhospitable and unlivable okay and full of bullets right flying bullets but there is one more problem there is lack of food lack of uh, clean water so what if we could develop systems to do that so if you do research in that direction you can easily get into drdo so that's a uh, first organization the next one which we have it is called as inmas now what is inmas institute of nuclear medicine and allied sciences now inmas is a key drdo lab focusing on nuclear medicine radiation biology and allied sciences and this is something similar to what barc is also doing so they work in radio protection so what if there is a nuclear bomb explosion and our soldiers have to be protected how can we develop systems to do that so radio protection agents development of radio protective drugs and agents to protect our soldiers and civilians our citizens from radiation exposure so there is one work which they are doing the next one where you can get into this in mass is medical biotechnology now under this you can do research on diagnostics and therapeutics for radiation injury so some soldier got exposed to radiation now and god forbid if there was a atom bomb uh, you know explosion or implosion um exposure so then how do we protect our soldier how do we take care of him how do we make sure that uh, he equips and he recovers right so nuclear medicine applications also these are all the things where you can get in and you can do research then of course you can get into the biomarkers research if you want to get into in mass so biomarkers identification development and early detection of radiation exposure and other biological threats is something where you can get in and if you do your research in your masters or bachelors or uh, you know phd or all the three and then you apply there your chances of getting selected is high initially you will be hired as a temporary a jrf or a srf and then they will convert it into a phd once you have finished your phd you will be absorbed there as a scientist sometimes you are required to you know write csi net also sometimes you are not required at all depends on the research which you are doing which impresses the scientist so that is where in mass into comes into picture there is a second one now the third one which we have is called as defense institute of physiology and allied sciences now what it is doing it is into something very interesting and that's called high altitude biology have you heard of it let me know in the comment section so high altitude biology is all about studying the effects of high altitude on human physiology human body and developing interventions or uh, medications to counteract the sickness because of you know staying on the mountains because some of us are not used to so now you must have heard that there is some kind something like motion sickness when you go to mountains or you climb, climb mountains so how to combat that for our soldiers that is the kind of research they are doing if you com- uh, contribute there you can get in then there is something called as extreme environment biology understanding how the human physiology works in extreme environment now what are the extreme environment it could be extremely cold or extremely hot or extremely rainy or extremely flooded whatever is the situation how the body reacts and responds to such situations understanding it and then developing a remediation to that de- developing a remedy to that that is a research where you can get in next you can always uh, like i said uh, not developing the super sol- soldier part but of course dipas is also working on human health and performance enhancement so they have they do have a biotech department which works on enhancing the physical and cognitive performance including nutraceuticals and functional foods now l- just imagine that a soldier is on the battlefield and his cognitive ability is impaired and instead of shooting at the enemy by mistake he shoots his own colleague right so his cognitive ab- ability can get impaired by some biological agent so this kind of research if you do then you can get into the pass so the next one we have is for those who are into food research are you then you have to listen to this one this is called as defense food research laboratory dfrl now food is very important to humans without food we cannot survive but to the army it is a lifeline you know in the olden days people uh, what he, the, the kings used to do is they used to cut the lifeline the support line the supply line to the food to the enemy armies and that's how the army will be like okay we don't have food and how they would they fight right so dfrl plays a very important role on creation of functional foods nutraceuticals food preservation biodegradable packaging and all of this all at one place and that's dfr now imagine that your soldier is sitting on siachen and he opens the food to eat and it's 
inedible because it's frozen, right? Or he tries to eat and now uh, he, he has no source to heat it. Or it, it requires uh, some kind of, uh, you know, mixing and there's not, nothing available. So, you know, f- development of functional foods for extreme environments, development of nu- nutritionally enhanced food products that provide health benefits beyond basic nutrition. You, if you do your research in that, you are most welcome to DFRL. Next, you will be also working on food preservation. Now, suppose it is an extremely hot condition. It's, it's uh, the soldiers are going inside a Naxalite area in Madhya Pradesh, Chambal region, and there's no food or the food, whatever is there, it's too hot and the food got spoiled. Soldiers will eat that and they will probably fall sick. So how would they fight the Naxalites, right? So that is where biotechnology methods can be used to extending the life of food and we can create situations so that Bio-preservation happens and there is no need of external preservation, right? Next one is biodegradable packaging because this army is always on a move, right? So if they're using plastics, they are destroying the environment, right? So it's it's a, a duty of the army also to take care of the environment, right? So biodegradable packaging is where they are doing research. So DFRL is very interesting. I think, you know, while I was talking to this, I felt like I should go there. Wow, this is an amazing place. If you are doing research in food, then you can contribute towards our army. Jawans with TFRL, right? The next one, the fifth one, which I have for you is uh, there, there are various labs which are either affiliated to DRDO, or these are small labs or CSR labs which are getting projects from DRDO. And uh, so there is a lot of molecular biology and genetic engineering work happening, bioinformatics work happening, AIML work happening, neurobiotechnology uh, work happening, uh, radiation biology work ha- happening, like BARC is also there. So these labs also you can join and then slowly you can get translocated or relocated to DRDO or DFRL or whatever is I mentioned. Now the sixth one which I have for you is called as AFMRL. Now that is Armed Forces Medical Research Laboratory. I'm sure you must have heard of Armed Forces Medical College, right? That is in Pune. So similarly, Armed Forces Medical Research Laboratory is there where they are developing combat medicine. Development of advanced wound healing technologies, including bioengineered tissues and regenerative medicine. Remember, when there is war, people just don't die, they get injured also. If somebody died, okay, we could not do anything. But somebody who is injured and he dies because we could not heal him fast, or if we could not get the right medicine or wound healing things to him, I think that's crime, right? So, if you could do some research on that and then you will present it to uh, DRDO or AFMRL, then they will take you. So, combat medicine, development of advanced wound healing techniques is something which you can do. Then also you can d- uh, work on medical countermeasures. Your re- if your research is aimed towards developing countermeasures against chemical, biological, radiobiology, radiological and neuro- nuclear, that is CBRN threats, then you can easily get it. Now, what do I mean with that? So, when a snake bites, what do you do? You do get an anti-venom, right? The same way, if the enemy has sprinkled some chemical warfare. So you have to detect fast and you have to get an antidote to that fast so that the soldiers don't die. So that is where chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear threats are there for our soldiers. And if you work in that direction, if you work on the antidote for that, you can save lives of soldiers. Their children, their family will thank you. And more than that, the entire nation will thank you because you saved lives. I think this is a wonderful Uh, video I'm making on the eve of 15th August. Wow. So the next thing which we have under AFMRL is telemedicine and biosensors. So now, you know, the doctors cannot be there all the time, right? So what if we could develop portable diagnostic devices so that the soldiers' vitals we could measure? And I remember there is a a startup in Bangalore Bioinnovation Center, which is doing exactly that. They created a home uh, hospital setup where which could which was portable just like a briefcase and you could check the entire vitals of the body including ECG, EKG, echo and electrocardiogram, everything in a suitcase, right? And they, they are in Bangalore Bioinnovation Center. I'm going to tell them after this video that they can, you know, approach Armed Forces Medical Research Laboratory. But by the way, yes, telemedicine and biosensors, this is one thing where you can get in. So these are the organizations, I think six organizations I told you today where you can get in as a biotech professional. Now the question will be how, right? Some places, only your research is enough. Some places, you have to know the scientists. Some places among all of these, you have to have the right funding. So how do you do that? 
you get right to buy rack or somebody and they give you funding to do the research and now that you go back to dfrl and say that hey i have done this research would you be interested so you are already funded by a government body so easily you can get in next you you can do your phd and then you can uh, go there by writing csi and you can do your phd and you can do a phd in drdo also by the way so yeah these are the ways you can get in there but now i know that you might be having a lot of questions or might be you want more details about each one of these so go ahead shoot them down in the comment section i will try to reply as soon as possible but i would invite all of you also to reply to each other so that we create a community of helping each other and we create india a biotech superpower 15th august 2024 let's take the pledge and the pledge should be making india a biotech superpower strengthening the defense of india growing the indian biotech products so they ship products and making sure that our population is not forced to import medicines or diagnostic kits or chemicals or reagents or anything you my dear friend has all the things available all you have to do is open your eyes and imagine all the best thank you so much for watching i'll see you soon in the next one till then keep shining take care bye bye